The Atlanta Institute of Music Alumni Spotlight presents Chris Kittredge. It was a Monday morning, I remember it. Um, it was maybe around 10 o'clock, and I got an email from JJ Boogie, who's a guitarist for Arrest Development. And he said, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if you've heard of Arrest Development. I know you're kind of young, uh, but I've seen some of your stuff on, on YouTube and on uh, your website and so forth, and I'm impressed. I feel like you pay attention to detail, and we need someone to do that. And he asked if I could learn some of their material to come in and see if you know I fit the bill. So I spent pretty much all day Monday, uh, a good eight hours probably, just behind the set uh, after charting the songs out and learning the songs. The next day I went in, played those songs, played through them a couple times, and on the spot right before me they, they voted for me to go on the tour. The style for me, I'm not used to playing hip hop. Uh, it's completely different. It, um, it is a whole different beast. It's, it's a, a genre of restraint where you have to hold back on everything you want to do. And a lot of the time I was thinking, and I learned a lot of great stuff at AIM that I've applied at, you know, at blues clubs, at, at jazz clubs, at uh, different events I've played at. Uh, all this technical ability and all this other stuff and here I am having to restrain myself thinking wow that's that's one of the things that I remember Tom saying over and over again restrain yourself you know make sure you keep it simple when you have to you're there to please the artist well we started off in Brisbane outside of Brisbane and Woodford from there we uh, flew to Perth uh, we did some shows in Perth um, from Perth we went to Kulangata uh, which is on the Gold Coast we went to Melbourne also, and then Melbourne we went to Sydney. Uh, Sydney was incredible. Um, and then from Sydney we flew to uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and we went to Jakarta and Bali, Indonesia. Obviously the whole tour was great, but Sydney Festival was the pinnacle. And we played for the opening night. Uh, from what they told me, uh, they cap off the amount of people that come in at 50,000 and then there was people beyond that so there's people as far as you can see and at that point I was sitting on stage and I, I was thinking I could die happy right now this was my dream this was this uh, I remember one time in class Tom was talking about I hope every one of you gets the opportunity to play for you know 60, 70, 80,000 people and I, that, that's what I was thinking while I was there I'm, I'm doing that and uh, I was wearing in-ears and I remember after we played Mr. Wendell I heard the crowd just screaming, you know, and they're, they're all there to see Arrested Development. I'm playing with them, and uh, after that show, I mean, it, just nothing tops it in my mind. One of the most important things I learned at AIM was uh, how to chart uh, effectively and how to chart songs in order to learn them more efficiently and to break them down in their simplest form so that you wouldn't spend hours and hours upon hours learning a catalog of songs for an artist that you're going to play for. I got the call for this gig with the rest of development. They gave me, you know, four or five songs to learn in a, in a matter of six to eight hours of what I had left in the day. And without charting, there's no way I could have taken in the small details and really learned the songs. Another great thing that was not necessarily a class taught here at AIM, uh, but something that you would hear Tom say or Craig say uh, over and over again was, you know, ensure you know make sure that you keep things simple you know because there were so many times that I have video of myself playing and I thought man that sounded good and I went back and watched it and I was over playing not playing for the song not playing for the artist and I definitely heard about it especially for high profile gigs you, you will hear about it uh, if you're not playing uh, you know what the track is called for hey this is Zay Williams basis of the group Arrested Development I just want to tell you a little bit about Chris. You know, to play drums with us uh, is not one of those easy type gigs. You know, you got to come in and do something with, uh, you know, a good spirit, you know, a good sense of time. You know, you got to groove with a drum machine. You got to know how to lock. 
you got to groove with something other than your own time and you got to know how to relate to it to make it feel live. So it takes a special drummer to do that. Uh, Chris is that drummer. So you got a situation where you got your sounds already pre-recorded to some extent and you need the live feel on top of that. Chris is the one to get. This is JJ Boogie from Arrested Development. Just wanting to let you know that uh, Chris Kittredge is uh, kicking some massive booty out here on tour with Arrested Development. He practices a lot. He's, he's got a great personality. Uh, he fits in well with the group. Um, that's why we hired Chris. He had a great personality and he, he worked real hard. And I uh, learned the material fast. And uh, he's a humble guy, so he's great to work with. Hey, what's going on? This is Tasha LaRae of Arrested Development. And I just wanted to tell you that I had the wonderful pleasure of playing with Chris on a tour. Um, it's a tour of Australia, and he is an amazing person to work with. You get along great with him. He's a lot of fun to hang out with, and he is an amazing drummer. It's definitely worth it. It's every bit of it is worth it. Um, you have a solid year or two years based on whether you do part-time or full-time uh, to really just take and almost compare it to uh, not to get religious but like a, like a monastery for monks you know you have a year to focus and just kind of cut everything else out if that's what you do I feel like if you come here you should do that just really focus on your instrument your your discipline whether it be drums bass guitar or recording arts you learn real-world experience you get stories of what you should do in, in certain situations, how you should act around artists, how you should, uh, you know, put yourself out there. Uh, the business aspect, you learn a lot uh, about music business. It really sets you on a whole different level that when somebody hires you, they realize, okay, you, you know what you're doing. Even if you've never been on tour before, you seem like you have. You seem like you've got that experience under your belt. And you'll notice a lot more patience with who you work with. You'll notice that they don't treat you uh, as if you don't have the experience and uh, well worth it. Uh, AIM was uh, one of the best choices I've made.